I can recall that uh, Playboy article coming out, and uh, people come up to me and said, have you seen Playboy? It says he's done it. He did it. He had, the deny detector says he's, he's done it. Uh, it's got to be a, a, a damaging thing. Uh, uh, what happened with that lie detector test? Uh, well, first, I think you'd have to start with the Playboy interview. Uh, yes. uh, I, I had uh, two interviews with him. Now, I was just supposed to have one. I had the first one here, right, in, right where I'm at now. Mm -hmm. And uh, that was more or less a sensible interview. There was no, uh, what, what I call the nut questions. <laughs> And, uh, but after I escaped and come back, and they returned, uh, the uh, original author, I think his name is McKinley, James McKinley, right. and he had a senior editor, uh, Gonzalez, with him. And that's when they started bringing up the lie detector and all that, and uh, asking what I consider that question, you know, about uh, mm -hmm. would you kill a guard to get out of penitentiary? Yes. You no, know, it's difficult to answer that type of questions. But anyway, uh, I agreed to take the lie detector test on the grounds now, everything I'm telling you now is on tape with the Playboy. On the grounds that, uh, I mean, providing that uh, they would take it at the same time the committee did, because I didn't promise the committee I would take one. But uh, before I took one, I was going to do some research on and read up on them, just like you would uh, psychiatry or anything else. Mm -hmm. But uh, they wanted to test before the committee got it. So uh, apparently Kershaw, he agreed to it. And they came down here, and uh, at that time I was in the hole. And uh, and they gave me the test. Uh, now, I don't want to make excuses for it, because if you do something dumb, I don't like to come up with excuses. But uh, there are certain things that shouldn't have, uh, I learned later that shouldn't have uh, conditions and I shouldn't have took the test on. For instance, we interrupted you frequently, and it was, it was hot in the room and all that, and all that affects your blood pressure and things. But I think the main You had thing, headaches, too. There was some mention that you were taking aspirin and. I don't know whether that affects the no, test or well, not. No, that, that's not supposed to affect. The only thing that affects it is uh, uh, interruptions, because the interruptions will alter your blood pressure and a uh, hot room. And, uh, and now, I read the text of the company put it out, uh, Reed, John Reed, I think mm -hmm. it is. And uh, uh, there's a lot of, uh, they use a lot of uh, stratagem, I guess you'd call it. But, you wish you hadn't have taken it? Uh, well, not particularly. I think I, uh, after reading the books, I don't think that uh, at first, initially, I thought it was going to be damaging. But after I read all, I read four polygraph books, and it didn't seem uh, all that damaging because it's not uh, all that exact. And once you read a book, you can't beat the test, mm -hmm. but you can keep them from uh, beating you. For instance, you can learn how to breathe and normal things like that. And, uh, so the conditions have a lot to do with it, and you don't feel, feel that those conditions were particularly good at that time for, for that particular test? No, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't discredit the test just on, the con just on those uh, mm -hmm. conditions, although I, I suspect uh, Reed Wood, the polygraph firm. Mm -hmm. But I'm, uh, I think, uh, where I made a mistake on, like I mentioned, is not reading the text. Because once you're reading, you're more comfortable and you know how to... Uh, how to react and yes. what to expect, I guess. Well, you're just more comfortable because you know how the machine operates. Mm -hmm. And uh, they... Uh, Will you take another one, or has this turned you off, lie detector? No, I'm going to take one for the committee. I see. But I'm going to go into more depth with the committee. For instance, I think uh, there's been allegations that I mentioned King and prison and all that, mm -hmm. and Kennedy and all that. Well, I'm going to have, well, two questions would be if I ever have any recollection of ever mentioning mention either of them until uh, I was arrested. And uh, that would probably be, uh, I think, another allegation that I took. But your, answer to, those, yeah. your answer to those questions would be that, mm -hmm. that you had not. Yeah, mm -hmm. I have no recollection of it. Mm -hmm. The yeah. story says, there's a line where Playboy says, you know you're a liar, and you say, yes, I know that. You know, true or false? That's right? false. That's not on the uh, tapes. See, Kershaw made, the attorney Jack Kershaw made tapes and Playboy made mm -hmm. tapes. And I asked Kershaw, I said, did I say something like jokingly? Mm -hmm. And he called him, he, he listened to his tape and said it wasn't on there. And uh, so, uh, now the rest of the questions, I don't know. If, I think they added, they added, sub, they, uh, they might substitute a yes for uh, um, uh, yeah, for yes, and something see. like that. Well, do you, do you feel damaged by the article to the extent that you might try to file some legal proceedings against them? 
I did file a suit in Nashville, I mean in Knoxville, but uh, Jack Kershaw, the attorney, he was, suggested I withdrew it. Mm -hmm. And I did, and I think now Mark Lane's going to sue them. And if he don't, why, I will, so. Jack Kershaw, we're told, got a lot of money for this. Is that what do you understand? Well, I know there's money involved because there was a, when they come down the polygraph test, it was mentioned the money. Mm -hmm. But I don't know just how much. I know it's between ten and twenty thousand. Mm -hmm. But uh, you don't care about the money particularly, although it had to disturb you a little bit. No, I'm, I'm not concerned about the money. I've never taken any money from. Uh, what concerned me about it is uh, the article and the. Uh, uh, see, they had a contract original with me. It's an informal contract that we, that's me and Kershaw, would get the censor and. Uh, take out anything that was objectionable mm -hmm. or that we thought we we didn't say they thought we said or something of that nature. Mm -hmm. And that never did happen. They just went ahead and uh, published what they had, what they wanted to. Mm -hmm. So Jack uh, Kershaw is out of the picture, partially because of that, partially because of these t-shirts that uh, uh, ticked you off pretty good. Yeah. You've had 13 attorneys. It, 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 you, you must wonder if there's anyone <laughs> around you can live with. That's really not correct. quite correct. I've had attorneys. Uh, I've had attorneys a court appointed I've never even spoke to. For instance, when Percy Foreman, he, he had the court appointed two attorneys, uh, two, uh, two public defenders. Well, I never did speak to them, but of course now they're on the record as me firing them. And actually, I never did hire them or fire them. Uh, one attorney, two attorneys, Bernard Fenstable and James uh, Bazaar, they, re they represented me seven years. And they got me firing them. Well, usually when a suit runs out, that's it. There's no firing. And, uh, but I know all these stories that, uh, you know, we fired 13 attorneys or something. You've studied an awfully lot of, about the law while you've been in here, as I understand. You're very uh, studious in that, that particular area. And it, 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 someone mentioned to me that Tennessee law says that when a new trial motion is filed and the trial judge dies, it's automatically a new trial. Why, why hasn't that happened? Well, that's supposed to be a law. And, uh, as you mentioned, uh, Judge Battle, the trial judge, did die. He died, uh, well, he has to die within a 30-day period, and he died the uh, 28th day or something, and we had a motion for a new trial. And, well, the successor judge, he ruled on the, the uh, statute, statute 17117, but the successor judge denied it. But we appealed it, and neither the Tennessee Court of Appeals or the Tennessee Supreme Court recognized it. So I guess we could go in there on some type of writ of, writ of error or something. Just hold it there. Okay. I think most people uh, understand now that there was no conspiracy in the escape, that you acted on your own. You've said it time and time again, and I think everybody believes you. But what did you hope to do? They, were, they mentioned at the uh, trial that you wanted to break out of prison, to break into a courtroom. That's a poetic way of putting it, but that, that's, that's it, is it? Of course, the main thing you escape in prison is, you know, naturally get out of the penitentiary. I'm not, uh, but, of course, I did have considered several times. If I should have been able to got out, I could have... Uh, it would have been extremely difficult for me to stay out longer than two three months. And I, th I thought there was a possibility that I could have some intermediary contact uh, Griffin Bell. Now, Griffin Bell can't give me a trial, but he can... Uh, he can recommend to the courts through some type of a friend of the court brief or something that uh, they uh, act favorable on any petition I would file seeking a new trial. Mm -hmm. But of course, I never did get that far. So you had, you just were frustrated. You just felt nothing was happening and, and you wanted to try to, uh, to get something moving, is it? Uh, I don't know if frustrated is the right word. Uh, it's just, uh, there was really two things going, the escape plus possibility of, uh, of, uh, working out some kind of arrangement with Bell, because uh, Mr. Bell, he's met several times. He wants to get this cleared up one way or another. Sure. And of course, uh, I would too, one way or the other. And, uh, but the, uh, the, a lot of this has to do with declassifying some FBI files. You feel there's a lot of suppressed information that nobody is talking about. Well, I know there's, I think a lot of these information has been put under seal in Washington, D.C. I think Judge, uh, there's a judge up there, Federal Judge Smith, I believe his name is. He's a, he's a, some SCLC members have filed a suit saying there's personal things in there. But I've suspected the FBI or the Justice Department has put a lot of other things that are not personal. 
You mean personal things involving uh, uh, Dr. King? Well, others too. I don't know. Others too. But uh, but I think that's the uh, cover, uh, mm -hmm. Dr. King. Mm -hmm. But anyway, I I wrote this SCLC uh, representing Philadelphia, and I wrote the committee, and I told them if there's anything in there personal, that as far as I was concerned, they could do, they could destroy it, uh, you know, forthwith, as long as we can get a transcript. Of the items in there wasn't personal, so. I haven't heard anything from the committee yet, but I think they'll like favorable one. We've been close to running out. Light off for a second. Well, I guess you got to start wondering who the hell you trust. You know, it's got to be a... might be in those those files do, do you have any inkling or any idea what it what might what they might contain I don't have any idea I know the church committee come up with a bunch of files that was damaging to the FBI and uh, everything's damaged to me has done been published in mm -hmm. uh, Time magazine publications like that so uh, I know there's nothing there damaging to me so it must be uh, favorable you figure they wouldn't yeah. suppress them if yeah. there was nothing there, yes. I guess, is the theory, huh? Yeah. You've, you've spent uh, a lot, well, you're in uh, administrative segregation here now, and we're talking about um, uh, your, your life in, in prison, if we're talking about an escape, I'm sure. you spent so many, uh, so many years in solitary, and uh, has, has it take, it's taken a toll? Do you feel that it has taken a, a tremendous toll on you physically, emotionally, mentally? I think while you're in there, it takes a toll on you. You seem like you're aged and get nervous. And, mm -hmm. But uh, I always seem to recuperate a couple weeks after I'm out. I know I was in three years straight one time and had to get out and do a little exercise and so mm -hmm. back to normal. How do you get in shape? What do you uh, drink fruit juices or I just watch run, your run, diet? Just run. Lift, you know, ex exercise most of them. Little sun, fresh air. Yeah. Seems to work. Yes. Mm hmm. And you're pretty well content here at Brushy Mountain. You, you, you certainly don't want to go to a federal prison, or have, have I heard that incorrectly? Uh, no, you have too many. Uh, first of all, I'm not a federal prisoner. And uh, once they get you in there, they can keep transferring you around. You may be in Hawaii and Island one day and mm -hmm. Atlanta the next. And uh, usually state prisons, uh, you have more uh, uh, access to legal material and things. Uh, Federal prisons, got, they have a good uh, propaganda system, but that's about it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I'd rather be in just about any state prison than mm -hmm. federal prison. You afraid they'll try to do something to you? Federals? Uh, yeah. Well, the FBI, they use these informers. They might throw something on you when you sleep or something, but uh, there's, there's really no reason me going to federal prison because they tried this two, three times. In 1973, I think they tried to send me to a mental institution and uh, federal Springfield. Mm -hmm. At Springfield, Springfield, Missouri? Springfield, Springfield, Missouri, yes. Mm -hmm. and, uh, you fought that? Yes, I beat that one. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's clearly against the law. We have a law and it says they can't transfer you out of the state against your will. Are they actively trying to do that? Are you? Not now, they've stopped it now. But they were trying to do it and, they, and while they were trying to do it, they knew it was against the law, but they mm -hmm. figured they could get away with it, I suppose. Mm -hmm. We were talking with Warden uh, Lane, and he was talking about the FBI swooping in here at the time of your escape. They were after you. That's all that they were concerned yeah, about. Yes. You, you, you figure that the same way, don't you? Yes. And if they found you, what uh, do you think they would have done? Do you have any idea? I mean, do, I guess what I'm asking, do you think the FBI wants you dead is what I guess? Well, I, I don't know. I don't like to make too, too extreme statements. I know they, they arrested one escapee named Larry Hacker, and they beat him up trying to make him tell... Uh, them where I was at. Well, he didn't know where I was at anyway, because when we escaped, we all went in different directions. Mm -hmm. But uh, I don't know whether they wanted to do something to me or just, you know, get all the glory for bringing me in. Mm -hmm. But FBI harassment, that's been going on for a long time. Uh, my brother John, they got him down there 17 years and uh, aiding and abetting a bank robber. And the guy that's supposed, the guy that pled guilty to robbing it got 18 months. So. 
harassing Carol back in St. Louis? Uh, I understand they burglarized her house, uh, sister's house. And, uh, mm -hmm. this, this troubles you a great deal, doesn't it? Uh, uh, yes, I, I, uh, you mean all these various harassments, they say? Yeah. Yeah, I, th I think it's kind of lightened down now because there's no, there's no one to harass. They've either got them in jail or, <laughs> or, uh, You even neutralized. mentioned about taking your father back to prison. Uh, yeah, well, that was before I entered Gilly Play. Yes, he, he'd escaped from Iowa or something. They was going to haul him back. It was up. back during the days yeah. in Memphis. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, I never did say anything about that until about a year ago, which is because the, uh, I thought they might do it. I talked to the, to the House Committee, and they said if uh, anyone was arrested on, not connected with the King case, but just, you know, harassment where they'd uh, considered an obstruction of justice. At least that's the way I understood them to uh, say. Okay, put a little black between there, and we'll go on to, we'll go on to Memphis here for a minute. Okay, I'm still going. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> When you were brought into Memphis, uh, your attorney, uh, your attorney now, Mark Lane, says that there was, I, I think he was using the word torture. There was, there was some conditions there in, 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 the, in the penal institution that, uh, that I'd like to explore with you a little bit, uh, keeping lights on all the time, that kind of thing. Can you describe that for me? I, uh, yes, I think when I came back, I mean, when they extradited me from London, yes. Yes. I, well, yes, they did have a special uh, they called it a vault fixed up. They had steel plates over the windows, and uh, they had uh, these uh, TVs, uh, monitors you, two sets of them in there, and watch you 24 hours a day. Two guards in cell block, like you would. And they had uh, microphones in there. You couldn't, even, you couldn't discuss anything in your attorney because they could pick up, up on the microphones. Uh, I think the, the official said they uh, turned the microphones down when attorneys come in, but you just had to take the word on that. Consequently, we, we had to write a lot of notes out. Mm -hmm. But the, the people who fixed these up wasn't the sheriff or the state of Tennessee. It was two, uh, two, two lieutenants from the, uh, from the uh, Federal Bureau of Prisons. And, uh, of course, you couldn't lights for on 24 hours a day. You know who these lieutenants are? Well, they got their names up there. I, mm -hmm. I know them when I see them. Mm -hmm. but, uh, Do you think it went higher? Do you think it, Ramsey Clark was awfully active in that area at that time? Was, did, did he have anything to do with this, do you think? Well, the Bureau of Prisons, uh, the Justice Department controls it, but I don't know uh, what individual gave the orders. It could have been uh, Carlson, I believe. He's the head of the prisons. Mm -hmm. But, uh, but that was, that was a, it was an unhealthy place. I know one time I broke out of the rash and I thought it may have been poison or something. And uh, I finally got a blood test and tried to find out what that was. And uh, later on, uh, about five years later, when we got a habeas corpus here, and we tried to get the all these blood tests and things, and they said the sheriff had ordered all the records destroyed, so uh, it's really... But you couldn't find these tests? No, no. Hmm. They, uh, they, uh, the sheriff, uh, he ordered them to uh, destroy the test for some reason. That's all on record down in the 1974 Hapus Corpus thing. What's, what, would, what would be the motive in your mind, James? Do you think, was it, was it an attempt to, to just to wear you down, uh, physically and mentally, to get you to a to point where, where you'd plead Guilty? Is, was, do you think that was part of it? Or? Yeah, I think that's what they do. They just wear you down gradually, and you get, uh, and uh, especially if you're attorney, if you, or if attorney's on your side, it's, it's difficult for them to uh, wear you down, you know. But uh, if they get control of the defense, then they can uh, more or less maneuver you in the position where you got to go along with them, at least temporary. Mm -hmm. What happened? The most, I think the most, the, the incident that gave them more leeway was, was uh, after Haynes got off the case, Arthur Haynes, the first attorney, mm -hmm. and the trial judge told me at that time that it would, in effect, that it wouldn't be no, there'd be no further uh, change of counsel. So once I got Percy Foreman, I couldn't fire him. If I would have fired him, I'd have went to trial with the public defender because uh, he got the public defender in on a case uh, shortly after he got in on it. Mm -hmm. did, did you have any feelings toward Dr. King at all uh, before? this happened? No, that's why I'm going to take this polygraph test. It's my contentions that I've never... Of course, uh, you can might mention the president's name or something, but uh, if you had really strong feelings about that, you remember. So I'm going to take the polygraph test, and if I ever mention uh, King's name or 
Kennedy's president. I think that's the two names that have been mentioned. Mm -hmm. Up until uh, I got arrested for the charge. When that's last, after I got arrested, I mentioned their names then. But up until then, the uh, question would be if I ever had any recollection of uh, mentioning their names. And, uh, of course, if you don't, well, then I think that should indicate mm -hmm. something. So this was King's activity and him, yeah. he, he himself were like another world then. I mean, you just really had no strong feelings, apparently, one way or the other. I, I think the state's, the state uh, contention is I used to, well, not state, but time incorporated. I used to see these various political figures on TV in Missouri mm -hmm. and get worked up, but uh, they didn't have TV in Missouri, so that's uh, fiction. So. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Why do you think he was killed? Have you given that uh, any thought about uh, the motive? Well, not too much. I, I don't read too much. Uh, you really can't get too good of information anyway, mm -hmm. because things might be misleading. But I, I had an article there somewhere where in March of 1968, I believe, he had changed his uh, philosophy. Rather than integration, he was interested in getting economic uh, consideration. Mm -hmm. And of course, there's a lot of difference between, you know, wanting money and then wanting to go into arresting or something like that. And Do you think he might have made some of his own people angry at him for the stance change then? You mean want, want, wanting to emphasize economic? Uh, no. Well, I, I couldn't answer that. No. You'd have to see these tapes and things, I guess. Yeah, yeah. But you don't have a real good theory about why he was killed then. Uh, no, I'm more concerned about, uh, I've heard all kinds of theories about it, uh, but I don't pay much attention to them. Well, some, most of them are ridiculous anyway. Mm -hmm. Took a long time to get fingerprints of you, I think 17 days. Uh, do you think they had them and, and weren't telling you they had them, or, or do you have any idea why that was? Yep. This is a continuation of, uh, of part three. It took a long time to identify your fingerprints, 17 days. Uh, do you feel that some were lifted or some were pl planted, or did, do you have any thoughts about that? Uh, no, I don't, I'm not, I couldn't, I couldn't be certain. Uh, Jim McKinley, the Playboy editor, he says they can't lift them. The only thing that would make me suspicious of something being lifted, I think there was two prints found on a beer, mm -hmm. can beer and I. Sell them if ever drink beer, unless it's going to tavern by mm -hmm. one just to, just because I'm in there. But uh, it did take quite a long, quite a while to match the print, prints up. I think uh, they're supposed to have computers. I think they can match them up in a, a few hours, isn't it? And I think they took sure. 13 or 14 days. Uh, and, and the Missouri Pen uh, certainly had them, didn't they? Yeah, but they had the wrong prints on a card or something. I think that might have. Uh, oh. There was some confusion then. I think so, yes. Mm -hmm. There's witnesses now that say that you were at that filling station, uh, Second and Linden. Uh, you were there? Is that is that your story? You were at this at this gas station getting a tire change or repaired? Yes, I'd had a flat tire the night before that, and uh, uh, one time I mentioned Percy Foreman and tried to get the tires evidence, and he never did do anything. After, after he got the guilty plea, the, they gave the tire to him. Kept the car, gave him the tire and the floor mats and certain items out there. I guess, I think, possibility certain things would have helped to substantiate my testimony. Mm -hmm. and, uh, so you heard uh, you heard the news on, on the radio? Is yes, that the way you heard yes. it? So you were driving, you left that, that gas station at 2nd and Linden, what, about 6 or? I don't have any way of knowing, I think it's around that time, but mm -hmm. I don't even know if it's Linden. I know the approximate area it is. And mm -hmm. the, I've seen the map on the Inquirer. And, uh, mm -hmm. and you were going back to uh, to pick up this man that you say is Raul? Is no, way? I just weighing the car back. Mm -hmm. And uh, now, the way I've recollected, uh, I've seen some police cars and people down there, and I turned off the other way. Now, there is policemen. There's one policeman down there, he says he seen me and told me to get my so-and-so out of the area. Hmm. I don't have no recollection of that, but uh, that could have been so, but I don't remember anything like hmm. that. Well, I mean, did, you were aware that, that you had somebody, uh, an associate, at, at that rooming house? That, that what they call a flop house? Yes. 
And, but you, you weren't going back to pick him up, necessarily. You were just going to leave the car there. Yes. Uh, want to go to a movie or something? Or? Well, I suppose so, I guess. Mm -hmm. There's two movies right down the street there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But, uh, uh, No, I don't. I really don't. It doesn't take a whole lot of police around to get me to go somewhere else to find out what's going on, especially from the yeah. police is after me to begin with. So you heard all this confusion. They turned and flipped on the radio. They said Dr. King's been shot. Uh, at that, did you think you were set up at that point? Uh, no, I was headed towards toward New Orleans when I had the radio, and I used to keep the radio, and I think uh, I didn't. I have two strong feelings about the, the shooting, uh, but I think um, uh, 15 or 20 minutes later, they mentioned the Mustang, mm -hmm. Whiteman, and, uh, and then instead of going towards New Orleans and making any phone calls, I just turned left and went towards uh, Alabama. Mm -hmm. Well, but you had a buddy back there, didn't you? Didn't you think about picking him up again, or, or didn't, didn't, that, didn't that cross your mind? No, I didn't cross my mind. I was worried about. Yourself? Yes. Mm -hmm. But you went to, to Atlanta then? Yes. Mm -hmm. Why Atlanta? What, what was in Atlanta? Well, I had to go somewhere. There's no particular reason why I would go to Atlanta. But I had some uh, uh, clothing things there. And, uh, oh, you had a, had a room there in Atlanta? Yes. Oh, I see. I see. So you were going back to pick up some of that yes. stuff then, huh? Mm -hmm. And then you made a call to... Uh, they said you had a number for an answering service in New Orleans, is it? I had one, yes. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't make any call. I, di I did intend to make the call after I seen these, this commotion in, in the street there, mm -hmm. police running around, but uh, I never did make the call. Mm -hmm. Because it was no, I didn't see any phones along the road, and uh, I heard all these reports, and uh, yeah. I forgot about telephone calls. Yeah. That was it. <laughs> did you feel your buddy was involved in all this police activity, or did you... You did, uh, you just... Well, he uh, wasn't my buddy anyway. He was no buddy, just a financial arrangement. Uh, mm -hmm. This is the man that would give you money? Yeah, yes. Mm -hmm. This is the man that you knew as Raul? Yes. Okay, put a little black between there. Okay, okay. <coughs> I'm rolling. Mm -hmm. <coughs> when, when you met Raul, you... Did you, you didn't know any other name for him. That's the name that he said was his, and that, that's all you ever knew. Yeah, I didn't catch that. And you met him where? Canada. Up in Canada. Yeah. And, uh, and you just met in a saloon, or? It was a saloon in, in a waterfront area of uh, Montreal. Mm -hmm. You never became good friends then? Uh, no, I wasn't good friends. Mm -hmm. Just business. Uh, mm -hmm. These were all aliases, uh, I assume. Uh, you don't think Raul was a real name at all, then? Huh? No, I've got some freedom of information papers in there saying there's Raul San Diego or something. New Orleans is supposed to be a him, but uh, I don't have the FBI. That's material from the FBI files, but I don't have no uh, nothing to substantiate that. But this guy, this man Raul, was the, was was the the contact between you and the money. I mean, that that's where yeah, the money came yeah, from. Yeah. Yes, I guess so. I mean, he paid you, is it? Yes. Uh -huh. Paid you what, like uh, hundred dollar bills or, or twenties? Uh, just gave you twenties. Yeah. Uh, new, new twenty dollar bills. Uh, I don't think it's always new. I didn't pay that much, uh, that much attention. But uh, mm -hmm. see, at that time, I thought that was a considerable amount of money because most mm -hmm. of my uh, offenses were not quite. But uh, of course, people are in narcotics trade or anything. That, that's really a small, small time. Uh, mm -hmm. Is that what you think of as Raul's prime interest as narcotics? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And some gun smuggling on the side, or? Well, that, that's that's what I think. Of course, the investigators think think other things. But I'm just talk, talking what what mm -hmm. I think. Mm -hmm. But primarily, he was involved yes. in narcotics, and he seemed to be working out of New Orleans. Is that did that seem to be like his home yeah. home base? Yes. Yeah. So you and so you went down to New Orleans uh, a number of times. Or, uh, no, the only trip I ever made, well, I've been through there a couple times, you know, picking up or meeting someone. The only time I ever made a long trip, I had to do it in December of 67. I drove a round trip there in mm -hmm. 36 hours, and uh, 
but that was only a special trip I ever made down there. And you get down there, and uh, was he in a, like a, did he live like in a rooming house, or? I never did not meet anyone in any type of, of uh, private establishment. Uh, you may have got that out of some depositions that Percy Foreman filed. The only person I, wherever I met a person would be in a tavern or public place. I never did go to any rooming houses. So like, uh, to, oh, yeah, okay, great. Five feet. Okay, just take it and, and dump it. That is, that is just a, the, the, the mob, that's the mafia's way of paying is in 20s. That's what they always use. That's why I was curious. Pay, pay everything on $20 bills. <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> well, when you'd get to New Orleans, would, would you make a call and say, Raul, I'm here, do you want to meet me someplace? What? No, I never did call him. I think someone else used the answer to the phone. And I'd uh, mention, the guy, I'd see Raul or some message, and they'd say, you know, meet him at a tavern or something. And, uh, mm -hmm. I'd give William Bradford to you and name the tavern, and he went down there, but I don't know what mm -hmm. could become of the best It was usually the same tavern, then? Uh, yes. Sir. Mm -hmm. And so you'd go there after making the call, and you'd sit there and and uh, wait, and then he'd, he'd walk in. Actually, we just met at this tavern once. It's on Canal Street, but uh, oh, there was no series of meetings. Uh, oh, there wasn't. As I mentioned, I just I think I just went down there uh, two times, <coughs> excuse me, two times on a type of buildings. Mm -hmm. December and uh, 67 and, uh, and about three months later, March of 68. Mm -hmm. so, so you had only been there twice, but you met Raul both times? No, uh, one time he'd, uh, he'd went somewhere else or something. I'd call and they said, no, you got to go to uh, Birmingham, I think it was, the last time. Well, how did you and Raul get into t to Memphis? Did you come up together? Uh, no. Uh, uh, we met at a, a motel there, a New Rebel, I think it was. And uh, I left Atlanta, Birmingham, on about... Uh, this This thing's been so long ago. I realize Some, that. I left Birmingham, I think, about March 29th or 28th. And I drove slowly up to Memphis. Mm -hmm. And uh, now the FBI contends that I didn't do that. That I went back to Atlanta, and, and after I heard Martin Luther King was going to Memphis, why well, I, I went from Atlanta to Memphis mm -hmm. after I heard it on the radio in Atlanta. But that's that's incorrect. And I think the fact is, I think the FBI has all my motel records from the March 29th until March the 3rd mm -hmm. between uh, Birmingham and uh, Memphis. But you, you knew that you were supposed to meet Raul in Memphis yes. on a certain day. Yes. And you did that? Yes. And you, it, in the morning? I know it was at uh, night time. At night time, the night before? Yes, it was raining. Yes. The killer. And, and d did you spend uh, the, the evening? Or did you go out and have dinner? Did you, what, what, what happened? Uh, no, that's not. I got rid of the, uh, the rifle. Yeah. And that was, uh, Mar that, was uh, that would have been March, April 3rd. April 3rd. Yes. Did you ever sit down with authorities and make a, I guess what they call a composite, you know what I'm talking about, where, where police artists or something can, can make a picture of what Raul might look like? Did you ever do that? With authorities, me? With, with, with the police or with anybody. Uh, did, did, did you ever sit down with, a, with, a, with a, someone that could make a sketch or put together a picture? I, I've never talked to any of, of, of uh, authorities, police or FBI or anything. I really don't intend to. Mm -hmm. But I have talked to the committee, and they've, they've never suggested any composite. But I showed them a picture and described the picture where the uh, alteration should be made. But I don't like to discuss too much that I've told the committee because I think they're operating in sort of a private manner, and I don't think I should be uh, going into too much of... Uh, mm -hmm. Well, what well, I would, would, yeah. would think that now, you know, you're talking about nine years later, and some, a lot of this is dimmed in your memory, as it would in anybody's. But when this thing was hot, when I mean, back in the early days, when, when you could recall Raul and see him on the street, you'd know him. You never did a, a sketch. You never had a composite made back in those days. Uh, they, was, they really wasn't interested. Um, my, I think one of my main problems in this case is they've got a circumstantial case against me this week. 
Well, when they extradited me from London, they, they, they had to extradite me quick. And they uh, extradited me for first degree murder and doing all the shooting and everything. And uh, nationally, they don't want to, uh, they, they don't want to alter that because they can't under the treaty. In other words, they can't try me for uh, aiding and abetting or anything like that. So they're more or less stuck with their own uh, testimony in England. So you think their mind was made up when they got you? Well, it had to be made up. Uh, I, they couldn't. Uh, uh, well, I don't know what if there's any penalty for uh, extraditing someone fraudulently or not, but I think uh, I can see their legal point where they've got to stick with their story. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And you've stuck with your story. Your story hasn't changed at all. No, I, except sometimes I'll mislead a, someone's, uh, but I mean, that's on the record when I do that, uh, Bradford Hewitt or someone like that. Mm -hmm. But I, 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 uh, I wrote everything down on paper, usually, when I first got arrested and gave it to various attorneys, and Haynes and Percy Foreman. And uh, I wrote a lot more for Percy Foreman, but he claims that he lost his file somewhere. He gave it to John J. Hooker. That's a Nashville, Tennessee attorney, and the attorney lost his file. But I can't see it. lawyers losing their files like that. I can't Just, either. Then, uh, but now when he goes in court, uh, his word is taken above mine more credibility, although I claim I still have them, what files I had. Mm -hmm. And he just goes by recollection. Put a black in there. Okay. <clears throat> Trying to learn a little bit more about what kind of a guy Raul might have been. Did, was he a talkative person? Did he? Did he talk a lot, or was he quiet? Or? No, it was not, there was not much talking. Of course, I don't talk too much either on the, on the outside. And, uh, so there was not a lot of chatter? He wasn't uh, humorous? He didn't tell you jokes? He didn't? No. There was nothing like that? It was, uh, was it very serious business when yes, you were with yeah, Raul? Yes, yes, mm -hmm. A lot of times people were on narcotics pills or something. They were kind of quiet. And, yeah. uh, Oh, so he might have been a user as uh, well as maybe a pusher. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. So he wasn't, he just didn't run off at the mouth much. Yes. Then. And, uh, and when you got with him, it was business. Yes. Mm -hmm. And uh, a, lot, a lot of that had to do with the money. I guess you were, you were pretty impressed with this money. Huh? Well, my main concern, not only with him, but with all other associations, uh, was uh, trying to get a passport. I was more concerned with the passport than it was money mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. because... Uh, I wanted to get out of the country and uh, mm -hmm. out of Canada. Mm -hmm. This was before the shooting. Yes. Mm -hmm. You wanted to get. You wanted to leave, leave this country, huh? Yeah. Well, I wanted to leave Canada. I'd already left this country, and I was. Uh, I wanted to get far away in Canada, mm -hmm. Australia, or somewhere. Or somewhere. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you thought Raoul was a man that could do that? Could pull the strings, get the passport? Yeah, that's what I, was, I was promised a passport the first trip across the border, and uh, nothing ever come of that. And, mm -hmm. uh, do you have a lot of confidence in Raoul's ability, even if it was if it was in an underworld sense? No, not not too much after you get after you're misled a couple of times. But I was trying various other ways to get passports and travel documents. It, mm -hmm. it wasn't just in one source. The fact is that's why I had plastic surgery one time. I was trying to get a merchant seaman's papers in California through the Coast Guard for a picture, and uh, it wasn't just one relying on one. Uh, mm -hmm. Uh, one source. Did Raoul let you down from time to time? Uh, we just don't have passports, only problems. I see. Wasn't but no generally his word was pretty good. On money, yes. Sir. Uh -huh. yeah. And if he said something, you usually you usually got it. There was never any, well, would you take a hundred less or anything no, like it wasn't that? No, I mean, bang, it was there. Huh? Never did argue with Nicholson and Dimes. Mm -hmm. He had it and he, he brought it out. Yes. Mm -hmm. Playboy has quoted to Percy Foreman as saying that you invented Raoul to feed conspiracy theories. What do you say to it? I don't know, Percy Foreman, he's been... Uh, he's this was been, your friend, wasn't it? Well, no, I won't say he's my friend. He, uh, he was attorney of, uh, allegedly attorney of my attorney for a while. Mm -hmm. But uh, I, Percy Foreman, he's been involved in a lot of uh, unorthodox things while he's uh, been an attorney. I think he was indicted here what, about two years yeah. ago for the Hunt family. Uh, uh, got some documents. I think he tried to uh, 
drive a witness to take a fall for something similar to he did to me. And uh, I wouldn't give I don't want, I wouldn't give Mr. Foreman too much credibility for two reasons. Not only because he's involved in these unorthodox legal uh, operations, but uh, now he's lost the file, and I'm positive he didn't lose it. I think he's he gave it to William Bradford Huey somewhere. And uh, when we had the habeas corpus hearing in 1974, uh, we couldn't subpoena him because he's more than 100 miles from Memphis, and that was a member of our subpoena. But we we invited him there to testify under oath, and he refused to show up. So I really can't see how he can say things in newspapers. And then when it comes time to talk under oath, why he will come up with some story. You didn't invent Raul. No, I didn't invent Raul him. was a real human being. At least he was yeah. at that time. He didn't know where he was from or who he was connected with, or he did, uh, didn't have any idea about... Excuse I... me. Hi. Come on in. Okay. Now, a lot, of, a lot of what you hope might be beneficial to you was, was wrapped up in this name, uh, Rosenson, and uh, determined that it was Randolph Irwin Rosenson, and uh, we've provided a picture of him. D does he ring any bells, or is he Raul, or can, can you tell by the picture? Uh, no, not that, no, but I really shouldn't talk about that, because I think the committee will ask me about that, and uh, I've given committee descriptions I can mention before, I don't want to go too much about what I told the committee, but I have given descriptions and drawn maps for them and things mm -hmm. of that nature. Would you feel that Rosenson might be a key in this somewhere? Oh, I wouldn't, I don't want to say that. Mm -hmm. I think if I were, were Rosenson, I'd sue Playboy for slander if uh, something was false. Mm -hmm. and, uh, yeah, I, they used his name right out in there, didn't they? Well, of course, I'd have to get counsel advice, but I wish he'd mm -hmm. sue me, so I, we might to the mm -hmm. FBI or something. You know. mm -hmm. Well, there was a report, wasn't there, of, of Rosenson being in Knoxville at the time of your escape? Well, I read in the Knoxville paper. I wouldn't... Uh, mm -hmm. You wouldn't. don't know whether that's true or not, though? No, I wouldn't. You've had no contact with no. him, apparently. Now, you're talking to the committee. You apparently have some faith in this committee. You don't view them as a threat, necessarily. Necessarily, yes. Necessarily. I mean, you think they might be on your side. Well, they've got a mandate to resolve these cases, and I don't. I think uh, that would be on my side. But uh, I mean, I don't think they're going out of their way to do me any favors. But uh, that's. Uh, of course, you're at a point, I guess, where you don't know who to trust. You don't know really. I'm, I'm not concerned about trusting anyone. It's, uh, I can tell anyone anything because uh, I'm ready to go to trial today. If we could, uh, we had a trial. If this committee came in and said, uh, okay, we found Raul, here he is, come look at him, and you say, yeah, that's him, that's the guy that was with me down there, would, would you be a state's witness? Uh, no, I don't tend to be a state's witness, but uh, see, there's certain unresolved things with the committee. Uh, now, Mr. Lane here, well, I have to discuss them with him. Yes. yes. But. Uh, Personally, I don't. I, I'm, I don't want to speak as a as my own lawyer, but I guess something can be worked out with the committee. But uh, I don't intend to be any state witness, and uh, I don't think uh, anyone can be prosecuted this late date anyway, because they've done committed. The government's done committed their their case to the uh, extradition hearing in London, so I don't see how they can switch around now and say uh, it was some other way. Well, there's I, no you, there's no statute of limitations or anything on murder. I mean, if uh... If Raul's the, the killer and they find Raul, well, he'll still be tried. Wouldn't he? Yeah, but they've done accuse me of it, so I don't know how they could mm -hmm. then switch around and accuse someone else. And you would be the, the main witness. You would have to be the main witness, wouldn't you? I'm going to be a witness for myself. Yeah. I'm not worried about the prosecution's mm -hmm. witness. So. You wouldn't come out and talk about Raul then in the court? Uh, no, I, I, there's nothing that I can tell. I mean, I can tell anything as my own witness I could for a state witness. And uh, I'm just not interested in being a state.